thank you, Janice. And I have to say thank you to the gardeners for nurturing the ground where the seeds for these um, post-secondary opportunities have been planted. We can see that a single tree growing strong and is spreading its roots and it's dropping seeds to grow a forest. And I'm just so happy to continue to be a part of this. Um, I'm happy to introduce the graduate panel. Uh, this started out as an idea from a song I heard while I was exercising. <laughs> um, it was titled, You Are a Masterpiece. And the idea I texted Janice and Drew was, let's do a focus titled, You Are a Masterpiece, which focuses on students' dreams and successes. Um, just as the gardeners have said that we need to showcase not only our programs, but we also need to showcase our students. Um, this, this is what this is about. And during the summer, we began asking FTCTPs to recommend graduates to be a part of the panel. Many of you responded. These young people have graduated from the universities, the state colleges and technical colleges, and are succeeding in life. And we know each of you have many more students that have fulfilled their dreams through the successes that they have received through your Florida Post-Secondary Comprehensive Transition Program. We will be reaching out to you more in the future to highlight these students in the months to come. Now, on to our today's panel. Many of you know Jill Brickner. She is one of our fabulous facilitators. Jill is the Employment Project Director um, at um, the Des Moya Foundation for Employment Opportunities. She, owns, she holds her EDS in Guidance and Counseling, a Master's in Administration and Supervision, and a Bachelor's in Science and Special Education. Jill and I were fortunate to work together when we were both school district people. Uh, she brings about 40 years of experience in advocacy and special education in public and private sector. She was employed with Miami-Dade County Public Schools for 36 years as a special education teacher, behavior management teacher, educational specialist, and instructional supervisor for students with intellectual disabilities, physical impairments assistive technology, and transition services. So you can see why we selected her to be our facilitator for this graduate panel. Please welcome Jill and the graduates, which Jill will introduce to you. This is going to be a fabulous session that I think you will um, be thrilled to be a part of. Jill? Well, good morning, everybody. Just checking to make sure everybody can hear me. Yes. Volume is good. Okay. I am so thrilled to be here. Um, I was so happy to see Senator and Mrs. Gardner. I remember years ago, and I think somebody else who's in the room with us can remember this as well, when we were invited to go to Orlando to talk about the, the repeal of the special diploma and what that would look like for our students. And it seemed so impossible at the time. And now look at everything that has come as a result of that and in partnership with that. So, um, so grateful to you and so thrilled that I can be part of a session along with you. You guys are my heroes. Thank you. So welcome everybody. I am so thrilled because I see several of our young adults who worked with me on this presentation are here with us. So not only will you have the benefit of seeing these beautiful videos that we created together, but you also might have an opportunity to ask some additional questions live. So um, Senator Gardner noticed that one of our young adults actually received some flowers and that is our first young adult that we're gonna be hearing from this morning. And that's Jay Lissa. So just a, a couple of slides on how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And then if somebody could also give me a, a thumbs up to make sure that that is all looking appropriately. Let's see. Okay, we got a thumbs up, beautiful. Okay, I like it. <laughs> okay, 
So welcome. And as Iris said, we will hear from five graduates as they share experiences from their programs. They'll also tell you a little bit about either their current employment, if they are currently employed, or the coursework that they are continuing to go through towards employment and their plans for the future. So here's how it'll work. Here's the format. So we will share each recorded interview with the graduate one at a time. If that graduate is in the session with us, we will offer an opportunity for any questions that you can ask directly of that graduate. At that time, any other questions regarding that particular presentation will be addressed. The next video will be shared. Second verse, same as the first, we'll do that five times. And then at the end, we'll have an opportunity for any other Q&A. Okay, so our first graduate that we're gonna hear from is Ms. Jalissa Martinez. She is a graduate of the College of the Florida Keys. And as you can see in this lovely little picture that we have here, she also is a graduate of an internship from Disney College. And she's going to tell you a little bit about that in the interview. And then as I stated, she is here with us and can do some follow-up questions. So I'm gonna push this button and hope the video runs. All right, so Jaylissa, please introduce yourself and tell us where you graduated from. Um, hi, my name is Jaylissa Martinez. I graduated in the Key West Community College at the Key West, Florida. And wasn't there another college that you went to after that? Uh, I went to Disney College program I was there for one year for 2019. Wonderful. So tell us, what were some of the great experiences that you remember from either one of your colleges? Um, my best, I'm gonna say my best experience uh, I could put in the Keys. I'm gonna say it's from when I first came into the Keys. That was a very first experience when school started and seeing new people that I never met before who actually lived in the Keys and people who have not, it's really beautiful, really. I like I never lived on an island before, so I feel like it's more like a mini Hawaiian <laughs> mini vacation. That's what I think of it at first, when I first started. Right, uh, so the audience doesn't know that you're not from the Keys. Tell them where you're from, because you came from pretty far away. I'm from Panama City, Florida. Um, it's really beautiful there. It's way like you know far away than Key West uh, but it's really beautiful there our town is great the beaches are wonderful and we got a lot of cool excitement in Panama City absolutely okay so you think that the best thing was that you had a whole new environment right yeah. Key West very different from Panama City yes it was it was so different than Panama City I just didn't imagine myself living in an island or something like the Keys. Tell me some of the things that you learned when you were at the Keys College. When I lived from the college and the school itself, I'm like on my own on this, really. Like as an adult, as a young adult and learning of how the college thing works, like how the college, how you be as a college kid works, how, how you've been a young adult, works and how to learn your own experience like learn your own mistakes and learning how things done if you're on your own or whether you're in a roommate or not it's just a really different learning experience to have so you were really on your own you did not go home at night right no that i was when i first started in the dorms at night i was very really terrified i was scared i was because none of my roommates were there to greet me or say hi because they were all not there. I get it that they were at home with their family or so on the break or at work, I did, didn't even know them well yet. So I was all alone. I was terrified and scared. And how did you get over that? How did you learn to be more confident in your independence? Well, after I was very terrified of being alone in the dorms without none of my roommates there, I have to call my mom for advice. I FaceTime her. She was still on the keys at the time still to make sure I was settled in okay. 
So I message her at first and ask her, even begging her if she could come get me, like stay at the hotel with them one last night, because I was not really ready for it at all, but be on my own. Wow. So my mom gave me one advice. She told me to lock, make sure my bedroom door was locked. She told me to put a movie on and maybe that helped me sleep at night. And it did ever since then. I've been doing it every single night. It didn't bother me at all how bright the TV was or anything. I was comfortable with whatever movies I packed and everything what I had in there. So you got some great tips from your mom on how to be confident. Yes, she did. She is, my mother is the best. There's no one else I could rather have a good mother than her. Oh, as a mom, we thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so tell me, do you think that the program helped to prepare you for employment? Yes, it did. Um, when I was in a project access program, it was a different level than being with different classes. In the project access, you have got to be one-on-one -on -one with a teacher, not with any other students. Wow. I was an independent study. Um, I learned about on the textbook what they showed me like problems or what's going to like happen in the future probably. Some of them were took some of them took questions, so be careful with that. <laughs> um, did they offer you any internships or job shadowing or anything like that? Um, well, in, in one of our classes, um, they taught us about how to go in the stores. And we see some of our previous students who used to be in the Keys in the campus did have a job at Publix or Kmart or anywhere. And it's a good experience to learn that. Okay. So are you working now? Yes, I'm working at the Sheraton at Panama City Beach, Florida. What um, is it there? Well, they, uh, Panama City Beach is like a big town. They have a lot of cool stuff, a lot of things to do. It's never a dull moment in there, let me tell you. <laughs> but um, at the Sheraton, where I work at, I'm a laundry attendant. Wow. Okay. And is there enough business in the hotel now to keep you busy? Right now, due to the COVID and everything, and summer just ended in the fall and Halloween and the holidays are coming up, sometimes it's a bit medium level to say, mm -hmm. or slow, it all depends. But the laundry room is never done working. We always keep washing, drying, folding, keeping busy as much as possible. So did you have to stay home at all during COVID or you've been able to work the whole time? I able to be working the whole time. I wear a mask every single day when I'm at work. Um, I'm always prepared for anything or something might happen. Oh, well, that's good. That's good to hear. So tell me, where do you see yourself in a couple of years? Like what kind of goals do you have for yourself now? Uh, ever since I left the Keys and ever since I did the Disney College program in 2019, uh, my goal is still working at Disney as a career in the future. Wow, that would be amazing. So do you have to go through an application process to make that happen? How do you make that work? Well, right now, like I said before, I was in the Disney College program for one year for 2019 for seven months. Um, I learned a lot from them, even though I worked there just for like a one year thing for seven months, but I learned a lot from them, even though not a lot of guests is going to be happy, not a lot of guests is going to be positive of everything, but as cast members, we have to do our best to make the guests happy as much as possible and helping out as much as possible. So it's all about customer service, right? Yes. And my boss... <laughs> He is a sweet man, but he always said this. He, it's one thing he told me and my other cast members. He said, you can't win every, you can't win every person. That's what he says. Okay. Well, that's some good advice. Yes. So yes, he did. So tell me, Jalis, is there anything else that you would like to tell the audience that we haven't talked about yet? Um, I'm just going to say is like, don't be afraid and try a new experience of different places you haven't been through before or what experience you don't think you're ready for. And I've been through that kind of thing. I got scared a couple of times thinking that if I'm going too fast or I'm not, I'm not ready for college or something. But it it's seems like you were. <laughs> yes. I, I talked to my mom about that kind of issue and I was like scared and worried and 
I thought I made mistakes or I'm not ready for college. I was only a freshman still at the time. And my mom told me that my teacher said I was doing good. I was doing fine. She's like, you are doing fine. Just keep trying. Don't get upset. And like, just keep learning. Okay. And you did share something with me the last time we talked about the place that you're currently living, which I think is very special. Do you want to tell everybody about that? Of course. Um, actually, me and my mom did talk about after before I graduated college. I was already talked about about getting my own place. I was. I always talked about a lot. Sometimes not a whole lot about it, but after when COVID started and everything, after I finally graduated, my mom and I had been searching for apartments I could live in. I say neighborhood to be in because my mom wants to make sure I was safe and plus you know I want to be safe too as well due to this kind of situations so due to all that looking and you know the budgeting and everything luckily my mom had a friend that knows someone else who's also a friend of hers um was looking for a roommate her name was Tevis and when I met her you know I was shy I was you know, when I meet a person I don't know, I'm in my little shell. I don't even know anyone. I'm scared like who this person might be or what after we done interviewing and stuff. I don't know what's going to happen after that. So my mom did all the talking while I was just like looking around the apartment. It was a really good apartment. It's not really bad. It's not bad condition or anything. It's just there, like really good condition. So then I had to do the application and waited it. And then one day, that one, I think it was about like Thursday. <laughs> and that's when she texted me and said, hey, are you still looking for that room? And I was like, yeah. And then she told me, do you, do you still want it? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and that's when she told me that I got the room and we were both roommates since then. That's so amazing. So you're living independently, you're working, you're a very confident, independent young lady right now. Thank you. That's awesome. Congratulations. Everybody must be incredibly proud of you. They are. My mom's happy about it. Um, she checks on me every now and then. And my grandmother's really excited and happy since now I live only 10 minutes away from my house. Okay. So that's our first recording. And Jaylissa is here with us. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Jaylissa? I do, Jill. This is Chris, um, and I wrote this down in the text here. Uh, Jaylissa, what advice would you give to students in high school who want to go up to a program like you did? Well, that is a very good question. <laughs> um, when I was in high school, I was unsure what I want to do in my future or what college I want to go to. And then when, when my mom got me introduced to my VR counselor, she told me what kind of opportunities or different colleges they had. And I was thinking about it in my mind. I keep thinking I want to do the Disney college program and trying to see how I'm going to get there. And trying to think the different opportunities in schools that they have, because I've never been away from home before. So when before I graduated, that's when the Key West called me to be into the school. So my advice for these students in the high school, I'm going to say, think about what you want to do in the future, study hard and keep going in your goals and dreams of what the dream job that you wanted. Thank you. Thanks, Jaylissa. Any other questions? Okay. Well, Jaylissa, thank you so much for joining us. I know you asked permission from that nice boss of yours to be able to sit in a ballroom at the Sheridan to be able to join us. We see from your background that you were able to arrange that. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Feel, feel free to stay and listen to some of the others if you have the time to do so. I will, thank you. Okay, so next up is Gabriel Perez. I'm going to share my screen. OK. 
Okay, and here we go. Please introduce yourself and tell us where you graduated from. Hello, my name is Gabriel Perez. I graduated first from Atlantis Academy as a private school, and it was excellent. I'm currently enrolled in Robert Morgan Technical College, pursuing a commercial art technology career as I graduated from 3D animation three years ago. Wow, so you graduated from one program, but then you yep. decided to come back for a second program. Ah, wow. yes, yep. That's For excellent. more marketability. Great plan, great plan. So yep. hey, tell me, what are some of the highlights of both of the programs, the one that you finished and then also the one that you're still in? Oh, I could name plenty where to start. I, I had a program that had to do with the gear, which was a lot of editing. I had Photoshop projects, I had illustration projects, 3D projects. One of my projects that was my final piece is now on one of the walls of the 3D animation. It's my chess piece. Wow, that's incredible. What an honor. Yep. That's great. Thank you. That's great. So tell me, do you feel that you are a little bit more independent now than you were when you started the program? Ah, uh, yes. I feel more independent now than five years ago. Tell me, what are some of the things that you do now on your own, by yourself, that you didn't do before? Before, I couldn't drive. I had to rely on SDS. Now I could drive fully. Wow, that's I, a big one. <laughs> yeah. I also know more about Photoshop than I was before. Uh, before it came in, I was completely alien to all this. I was like, whoa, I did not expect this at all. And wow. it's so interesting and it grabbed me so much. Like, you have no idea. So you feel like when you come upon a program like Photoshop that you can move through it more independently. You can almost learn on your yep. own. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. That's great. That's yep. great. Now, do you feel Not that without the help of um, Mr. Martin, Ms. Vieta, and all the rest. Of course. It's great they to have a lot. support team, right? Yeah. Great support. That's wonderful. So tell me, Gabe, do you feel that the program helped to prepare you for employment, for a job? Yes. How so? How did they do that? Uh, I joined the program called Project Tops. They help you with all sources of like learning how to do the project right, learning how to do, how to practice for the test, such as my my participation in the ACA program. Oh, what's the ACA program? ACA is uh, Adobe Certified Associates, which I passed. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. You also mentioned that you are currently in an internship. Yeah. Can you tell me the, a little bit about that? The internship was in Miami-Dade County. Uh, I know the the college name, which is Lindsay Hopkins. Okay. But I when I participate in the graphic design uh, apartment. So that's and what I and oh sorry sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. I I did printing there. I did a lot of cleaning there. And when I made a project for for my boss, which whose name is Mr. Dallas, I made a project for him. I, graphic design project that was so good. They they were so impressed. It's their all the all the posters are all over their, their college. Wow. That's incredible. So it seems like the internship yeah. is really giving you a feel for what kind of a job you want when you're done. Yep. That's fantastic. And are you working now? No. No, no I'm, I'm enrolled. You're finishing school? Yes. Great, great. So, you know, a lot of people are talking about the virus, about COVID-19. Can you yeah. tell me how has that affected you in your schooling or in your preparation for work? Uh, 
intern wise it did affect me because everyone has to be quarantined from a learning perspective it gave me a, a new one because i never done online learning and not only is it flexible but it's like really fun too wow okay so you're you're actually enjoying the online platform yeah. that's great that's great so Gabe, tell me about some goals that you might have for yourself. Like, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years from now, I would be in a major industry of my, of my choosing, like 3D animation or graphic design, basically okay. in a video game industry. So big industry. Yeah. That's what your goal is. Wonderful, wonderful. So, Gabe, tell me, is there anything else that I haven't asked about that you would like to share with the group? I would like to give advice for future creators, such future animators. Please. My advice for every one of you is never give up. Find your passion, learn like a sponge, and always go for it no matter what. That's incredible advice. Thank you so much. All righty. So we do have Gabe here with us. If anybody has a question that they would like to ask Gabe. Right, Gabe, do you want to say, say good morning to the group? Good morning, everyone. Uh, I would wow. like to see for any advice, like for the high school, like find your passion, like find what you, what, what benefits you, like what is your passion, go for it and never give up. That's some great advice, Gabe. Thank you so much. I see you've gotten a haircut since I last saw you. You look awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody else have a question for Gabe? Gabe, you're getting a lot of support in the chat box. I know, I um, see. Thank Maddie you, everyone. And Ms. Vivian, yes. <laughs> anybody have a question for Gabe? Nothing. All right. No one. Okay, I guess you said it all in your interview. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody is appreciating your advice. Are you seeing it in the chat box, Gabe? Lots of great feedback for you. Oh, yeah. I see it. All righty. Okay, guys. We're going to oh, move on question. to our next. Oh, you have a question. Go when would you graduate? Oh, I'm graduating next month. Just, just before Christmas. Okay. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, you guys. Well, we are going to go ahead and move on. Whoops. To our next slide. And that's going to be Blake. I believe I also saw Blake enter the session. So welcome, Blake. We're going to listen to your recording and then um, maybe there will be some questions for you. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. And here we go. Good afternoon, Blake. It's so good to see you again. Yes, ma'am. I'd love you to start by introducing yourself and tell everybody where you graduated from. My name is Blake Adams and I graduated from GGHS. Excellent. High School in Santa Fe College. And Santa Fe College. Do you have your certificate from Santa Fe College that you would like to show yes. everybody? Yes. Please do. Wow. Excellent. So you earned a certificate of completion from Santa Fe College. Yeah. Congratulations. That's great. 
Yeah. Can you tell me what were some of the best things about your experience when you were at Santa Fe? What did you really love about being there? Uh, I learned I learned different trades. Great. Can you tell me about that? Yes. Um, I learned how to cook. Excellent. Anything else? Cues. And in job, job skills. Lots of job skills. Yes. That's great. Can you tell me? And computer skills. And computer skills. That's awesome. Yes. That, so can you tell me, do you feel that you are more independent now than when you started the program? Yes. Great. Can you tell me some things that you are able to do now by yourself or independently that you weren't able to do before the program? Um, oh, yes. Please do. All right. Um, well, I... I I got a job. You got a job. So that's yes. number one, right? Yes. 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 So tell us where you work. I work at a village. At the village. And what do you do at the village? What is your job at the village? I say kitchen porter, chef. Excellent. So you assist in the kitchen. Yes. That's great. You know, Blake, when we talked before, you also told me something very important that you're doing on your own in relation to your medication. Do you want to tell us what you know how to do now for your medication that you weren't able to do before? Yes, ma'am. I take it on my own. Everything on your own? Yeah. Right? And you even prepare it in the pillbox on your yes, own, right? So lots of things that you're able to do by yourself now. Yes, ma'am. That's great. That's great. Um, tell me a little bit more about your work. What are some of the tasks that you do at your job that you really like? I like to... Um, bus tables. And wash dishes. That's great. You enjoy those. Yeah. That's great. Now, do you think Santa Fe College helped you get ready for this job? Did they help you get ready to have this job? Yes. Yes, ma'am. How did they do that? How did they do that? How did they get you ready? I'm very serious. So they, they took those internships very seriously, and you yes, took it very seriously. Yes, ma'am. That's excellent. That's excellent. So you're really concentrating on the, the skills that you were learning, huh? Yes, Beautiful. Now, tell me about ever since COVID-19, okay? So we've been dealing that with that for like seven months already, right? Did that affect your job at all? Oh, uh, yes. How did it affect your job? How so? I have COVID-19 testing in two weeks. So every two weeks you have to get tested? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you have to wear a mask when you work? Yes. Yes. And what about, do you have to use hand sanitizer? Yes, ma'am. And it sounds like in your job, you do a lot of cleaning. Do you have to clean even more now because of COVID-19 to make sure everything is nice yes, and clean for the people? Yes, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, Blake, what do you think some of your goals are? Like, where do you see yourself in a couple of years? What are you working towards? Um, I work for the dining service. You want to stay working for the dining service? Yes. 
So you really see this job as a long-term job? Yes. You're very happy there? Yes. That's great. That's great. So it feels more like a career for you, not just a job. All right. Yes? Yes. That's great. Okay. So Blake, is there anything else that you would like to tell us about that I haven't asked you yet? Anything else you'd like to share? Oh, yes, ma'am. Please. Uh, I'd like to to pay attention to my job. So when you're at work, you like to be really focused. Yes. Really pay attention to do the job right. Yes. That's great. Do you have a supervisor that lets you know that you've done a good job? Yes. And you have a good relationship with your supervisor? Yes. That's great to hear. Cameron is a good picture. That's great to hear. Oh, yes. I want to show her you need to get your guy to go. Yes. I got his check to get right here. Oh, let me see. Dining Services Associate of the Month. Wow. Congratulations. And an employee of the month too. Employee of the month. And how did you feel when you got that certificate? How did it make you feel? Um, a different man. Did it make you feel proud? Did you feel yes. good when you got that? Yes. Yes. I got a letter for that though. And another letter. Wow. Okay, so Blake, I guess you feel really good at work because people are telling you that you're doing a really good job. Yeah. Yes. You feel confident, right? Yes, That's so great. Awesome, Blake. So was there anything else that you wanted to share? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And I'm so glad that you decided to do this interview with me. All righty. Thank you so much, Blake. That was great. Um, Blake, are you there with us? Do you want to say hello to the group? Do you want to start your, I see you there, Blake. Do you want to start your camera so everybody can see you? I don't know. He might be having some difficulties. I think that Blake uh, is joining us, joining us by phone, Jill. I see. Okay. So does anybody have a question for Blake? Boy, Blake, there's all kinds of great support for you in the chat box. Go Saint. Go Blake. Yay. Great job, Blake. There's lots of good stuff here, Blake. I don't know if you're able to see that. But you've got lots of great support and congratulations on your graduation. Lots of people supporting you here in the chat box, Blake. Beautiful. Anybody have a question? Okay, Blake is saying that he can see us. So he's working with us in the chat box. Does anybody have any questions for Blake? Oh, I see that Blake did an internship at Domino's on campus. That's great. Thank you for sharing, Linda. Okay, Blake. Well, we appreciate the great interview that you did with me and thank you so much for joining us today. All right, so we're gonna now move on to our next, our next graduate. Um, I'm going to introduce you to Imani Jones and Imani unfortunately was hoping to be with us today, but I, she works at a daycare center and I guess that um, it was understaffed today. So she let me know at the last minute that unfortunately she couldn't join us, but hopefully the video will speak for itself. So here we go. I'd love you to introduce yourself and tell us where you graduated from. Okay. 
My name is Imani Jones and I graduated from Indian River State College in a program called Project Stage. So when you were at Project Stage, tell me, what were some of the highlights of the time that you spent there? Um, I would say I actually, I actually knew a couple of people that were actually there, but they weren't, they weren't at Project Stage though. So meeting people who were at the college? Yeah. Making new friends? Yeah, that was, that was actually one of them. That was, that was one of the highlights. Is there something else that you really remember as being really positive for you? Hmm. I actually enjoyed, I enjoyed the environment there, so. Just being on that college campus. Yeah, I've, I've been on that campus multiple times because when I was in high school, I actually went there to take my early childhood test, so I've actually been there multiple times. Okay, so it was a familiar place to you too, it sounds like. Yeah. That's great, that's great. Tell me, do you feel like you're more independent now than you were when you started the program? Yeah, because they're like, um, pretty much we had, we had like freedom, like not that much freedom, but like freedom, like we could go anywhere on campus and like do anything on campus, but there was just like, like strict rules on campus, certain things that we couldn't do, so. Right, but that applied to everybody on the campus. Yeah. Right? Okay, so one of the things that you really liked was your freedom to make choices about what you were going to do and where you were going to go on campus. Yeah. Yeah. Are there some things that you're able to do now that you weren't able to do before you were in the program? Hmm. Well, right now, um, let's see. I had to get up early. <laughs> That's one thing I had to do, but luckily for me, I didn't have, I had to get up at like seven, eight o'clock, but that was it. Okay. So responding to that alarm. And got out at three. Okay. okay. Yeah. That alarm clock, boy. All right. Tell me, do you feel like the program helped to prepare you for employment? Yeah, it actually did. How so? Um, let's see. At the college, I was around a bunch of little kids every day, volunteering and stuff. So, so that actually that actually prepared me. So they gave you some volunteer opportunities to to practice yeah. the job that you wanted, which was to take care of kids. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And so, tell us about where you're working now. I see you're wearing your work uniform. Yeah, this shirt actually says Ivy League Academy on it. So. They take infants six weeks to four years old, which is VPK age. So I'm there Monday through Friday, 7.45 until 2.15. And I get there about 10 minutes early. So I clock in 7.30 every day. So that's and, really and, a full-time yeah. job. <laughs> yeah, because I'm in a room with, let's see, when they, when they have five infants in the classroom, then I stay in there until one of the other teachers get in there. And then after that, that's when, if another teacher has about like 16 kids, then I'm in there. But if she has about 15, then she's good. She's in ratio. And then after that, I have to like um, stay in there when she has about 16, 17 kids. And then I have to watch the other kids until their teacher gets there. And then after that, that's when I start bathroom breaks. And then that's until a few minutes before 10. And then after that, 10 o'clock is when I start lunch breaks in the ones. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, really that's my day every day. That's really preparing yeah. you to be a great mom too. Yeah, right? and I also, I also change diapers too. And there. changing diapers, there you go, wow. <laughs> Tell me, do you think COVID-19 has had an effect on your job? Um, let's see, yeah, it kind of has like, Pretty much for about, let's see, I think about a month or like two weeks or so, I didn't, I didn't go to work. So I couldn't go to work because of the, the corona. And then after that, I got the phone call and then I was back at work, which is good. And what kind of precautions are they taking at your job? Um, right now, we just have to, we just have to wear our masks. That's what we have to do. But it's like, 
when when we're around the same people every day it's like there, there's no point in us like having it on because we're because we're around we're around the same people every day so what about the kids have the kids stayed healthy um yeah some of them some of them actually have but you oh. know because some of the some of the babies are teething and stuff like that so it's like they automatically get sick yeah yeah and yeah. some of the older kids they actually they actually wear masks that's okay. that's what they do that's good that's good Amani, Imani, I'm very excited to hear this answer because I know you're the type of girl that thinks forward. So I really want to know what your future looks like. What is your like goal for the next five years? Well, my goal is I, I would like to have a house. Uh, that's one. Amazing. Whatever car. So you're saving up for that? A house and a car? Yeah. And then who knows? I don't, I don't, I don't know maybe get married and have some kids wow well that would be great okay my dear you're so charming is there anything <laughs> else that you would like to tell the group that i haven't asked you about hmm, let's see i can't really think of anything but i know one thing when i was at the college what i did every day was i went to this this crochet class that's what i did like every monday Wow, that's so funny that you bring that up because I am a serious crocheter. I make a lot oh, wow. of stuff out of crochet. Now that I know that, I'm going to text you some pictures of things that I've made. Oh. <laughs> okay, at that point, we went off into crochet land. So, <laughs> does anybody have any questions maybe that I could help out with? I know Imani wasn't able to be with us because she's working, or maybe there might be someone else from Indian River that's here that could answer. Anybody have any questions? I'm checking the chat box. Okay, are we good? All righty. All right. Let me prepare for our next and final one. We're going to see Christina. I haven't seen Christina pop into the group yet. Um, Drew, if you see her here, Christina Arias, let me know, but we'll go ahead and I'll share my screen and you can hear from Christina. Please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So please introduce yourself and tell us where you're graduated from. Hi, my name is Christina Arias. I am 26 years old and I graduated from the University of Central Florida. And when you were at UCF, tell me some of the real highlights of your experience there. Um, the highlights were living on campus, you know, the day-to-day -day life. The memories were with my best friend, Amanda. We got to live together. And so it was awesome. The two years that I actually did live on campus, it was great to be able to live with my best friend. That's so incredible that you actually lived on campus. Was that in an apartment or a dorm? Or what? It was a dorm. Um, it was the Nike building. Um, a lot of people want that building because it's like a lottery you play to get the best building. That one, you have an actual kitchen you share. You have a living room that you can share. You have double bathrooms, double sinks, and then everyone has, it's four people in the room and everyone has their own um, bedroom. Wow, you really did win the lottery. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So that was really a highlight for you, being able yes. to share with people that you knew and that you felt comfortable with and living on campus. Yes. Oh, great. Now, do you feel like you're any more independent now than you were when you started the program? Definitely. I was independent before starting the program, but my independence has grown 100% more when I was in the program. Give me some examples. Like, what are things that you do now that you really didn't do before? Before, I didn't. I would go with my mom grocery shopping. I would tell her what we needed in the house, but I necessarily didn't go grocery shopping for myself. I was with mom, you know, she paid for it. We went, I like to go with her to get outside the house. 
So those were things that I just did like that. But living on campus, I went grocery shopping with my best friend. I would go and make sure that I had everything I needed. And those were the things that I never did for myself before. And were you paying for the groceries now? Yes, I was paying for my groceries myself. <laughs> yes. That's great. And what about meal planning? Do you guys get together and decide like what you're going to cook or do you eat out? Um, a lot of the time it just, it just depended on the day and stuff like that. There were some nights where like, I'll cook for us tonight and things like that. But most of the time she already had something she was going to eat. I would just make something quick for myself and call it a day because we really didn't know each, each other's schedules were different. I see. I see. Now, what about employment? Do you feel like the program helped to prepare you for a job? Yes, it did. The program helped in so many ways. Um, Tammy actually started a class. It really wasn't an official class at the beginning when we started. It was when um, we would do it at night, actually, and everyone had to come dressed up professionally, and she would talk about all the requirements and things that you needed to be successful in order to um, attain a job. So you had a specific class just to prepare you for employment. Yes. That's really great. Awesome. Did you do any uh, job shadowing or internships or anything? I did my internship at the job that I'm at now, UCP, a school for kids with physical, medical, behavioral, and learning disability. I did a lot of jobs when on my internship. I did aftercare. I did the front office. I worked in the kitchen. I um, went in and out of different classrooms if they needed more support with students. And I also changed students' diapers and helped them sit on the restroom when they needed it because a lot of some of our students did need support with that. So I did a lot of the jobs that some people may never want to do, but I did. <laughs> wow. So you were offered a position at the place where you were doing your internship. Yes. That's great. So how many hours do you work? I work Monday through Friday from seven to three. Wow, and doing all the same things that you were doing in the internship. Almost everything. Now I don't change. Now we've actually hired people that just go at different times of the day to change our specific students. Got it. And take okay. them to the restroom. So I don't do that part anymore. Okay. But if they need me to, I'll jump right in and do it. I bet you would. I bet you would. Yeah. So tell me, um, you know, we're all dealing with COVID-19. Tell me, has that affected your job in any way? Um, the only thing that affected with my job is that I, during that time, I wasn't at work. So the main teachers of the classroom were still online teaching the students, but I didn't have to do anything. So I kind of just got time to myself, really. In my house, since we're Hispanic, our door could be locked, but it's never locked because my family's always here. I had my sister at home, my dad, my mom, the two dogs. My brother would come by with the kids. So I never really was alone. So there was no moment to feel depressed or feel like I wasn't able to be with my family. I'm always with them Monday through Friday, any time of the day we're together. So you were so in COVID? I was fine in COVID. You could really connect with your family. That's so yes. nice you. Awesome. Okay. So tell me, um, what kind of goals do you have for your future? Like, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, hopefully either in an apartment or I own a house, which if I own a house, I don't want to do all the hard work, but I'll do it. So I see myself married and I see myself still working and still um, inspiring and helping other students with disability to be able to reach their goals and their dreams. And I understand you already know who you're marrying, right? Yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. You have a fiance. So that is yes. great. That's terrific. Okay. Well, Christina, is there anything else you would like to share with the group that I haven't asked you? Um, honestly, the world needs to see that young adults with disabilities can do more than what they see us. They kind of put us in a box or a lot of the time they kind of have like these um, facilities where you kind of just live or stay and you kind of just do the same things over and over. Young adults with disability can do things. A lot of the students in the IES program at UCF were capable of doing so many different things. I hear all the time where they're working, 
that they're doing this and that. If the world can see us in a brighter and different perspective, I think honestly, disability will not be as scary as some people think it is. Wow, well, I agree with you 100%, 100% but I don't think I've ever been able to verbalize it so beautifully. That was Thank you. Very and that I hope, I hope that this program keeps continuing for other young adults with disability to be able to follow their dream and to find their passion. You know, I never imagined becoming a teacher. I used to play teacher with my little sister all the time, but I never imagined becoming a teacher. And when I finally realized that's what I wanted to do and I work there, I come home all the time so happy from work. I'm always telling my sister or my dad or my mom or whoever's in the house, today was this, I saw him succeed in this and oh my gosh, she did this and oh my gosh, I love her. She's one of my favorite students. I just love what I do. And if more people with disability can find their passion and keep going, I think that would make things a whole lot better in this world. Wow, well, I'm very impressed by you, young lady. Um, I <laughs> Thank think you. Incredible future ahead and I wish you luck in everything that you're doing. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye. So, wow. <laughs> and I was very truthful when I told her that she worded that so beautifully. It's in all of our hearts. We all share that passion and that commitment. But to hear it coming from her in such an articulate manner just really blew me away. So I don't know that she's here with us. I think Tammy from her program, is there anything that you would like to share with the group, Tammy, about Christina since she isn't able to be with us or about your program? Um, if I can choke through the tears, yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> honestly, uh, we, we have been amazingly impressed with the way our students impacted the rest of students on campus. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, and, and she is a perfect example. Breaking down those preconceived notions and covering the, the normalcy of being not your average person. Um, everybody's got something they're great at and something that they're not great at. And for our students to have the opportunity uh, pre-COVID to sit in the classroom next to just your average anybody and how that impacts the future. Um, I always say that the kid that's in their um, student learning success class who one day gets an MBA and has someone walk in for an interview that has a disability is going to look at that person and say, gosh, you remind me of a guy I met my freshman year at UCF. Let's have a conversation. That's how we change the world. And clearly she's a young lady that's gonna be leading that change. She yeah. is really amazing. Thank you so much, Tammy. Thank you. Any other questions for Tammy? Okay, then I'm wondering, are there any other graduates who are with us today from any of the other college programs that would like an opportunity to share something with the group today? Drew, do you know if we have any other graduates that are here with us? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Yeah. No? no. Okay. Well then, um, I have a question for the group. So the outcomes for these spotlighted graduates are what we're all looking for, what we're all really striving for. So what challenges do you face in making this type of an outcome happen for all of your graduates? Mm Anybody have any thoughts on that?
Is everybody still wiping tears? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, think, I guess it's a quiet group this morning. <laughs> but I, I think people are just determined. They just persevere and while they see challenges that our programs just make them make them opportunities as you have done with um, our panel and getting them to share um, a lot about what they see, what they dream, what they feel, what they received. And it's just a snippet of what our programs are doing. So, you know, particularly in our field, you know, sometimes we don't think about everything as a challenge, right? We just think about it as opportunities and it's what we do. So perhaps that's why it's silence, you know, and everyone just continue to work to see every student achieve the same or similar outcomes. Jill, this was phenomenal work. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, Janice, thank you. Yeah. It yeah. was such a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. I, you can probably tell from the interviews that I was oh. having a blast. Yeah. <laughs> I really so enjoyed meeting these young ladies and, and gentlemen, and um, it was just such a pleasure hearing from them and working with them. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. I think Ada, uh, Ada, I apologize if I pronounce your name incorrectly. Ada. Um, she, yeah, Ada, she said, trying to juggle the paperwork and workload with the quality time spent with our students staff to student ratios. That's one opportunity. Um, yeah. That's something that's challenging. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. anybody have any suggestions on that? Time management, <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Well, guys, if there are no other questions, um, I, what, does anybody need my contact information? I have it on the first screen. I can share that again. Um, or I can just really put it in the chat box, probably easier. Um, my email is basically my name at Gmail and here is my cell. If anybody has any follow-up questions. But if not, I appreciate everybody joining us today. And we're so excited about the rest of the conference. And um, I'll hang around a little bit to see if anybody has any last questions. But thank you all for coming today. I hope yeah. you enjoyed the session. <laughs>